Hello everyone, and good morning to all of you! It is your host, Kremsko, ready to deliver another very exciting episode from the game, Company of Heroes. Today we're going to be having a 2v2 matchup on the map Rails and Metal, as you guys can already see by now. Quick 360 look around Rails and Metal, the center portion where we always see the action. Kind of interesting map if you ask me. You know what's really cool actually when you're doing a 360 panoramic view? When you're always looking from a horizontal perspective rather than the vertical, you know, GTA looking sort of perspective. If you look at it from a horizontal way, you notice a whole lot more things, don't you? I mean, like, for example, the ground elevation and all that sort of stuff. You gotta imagine if the people who are making this, uh, this map, they must actually spend so much time going into these different perspectives and looking at the houses and on top of the hills and, you know, all that sort of stuff, right? Don't really appreciate it from, as I said, the GTA point of view. Try playing the game like this. It actually does look like GTA. But, uh, anyway, the old GTAs. Um, okay, so we've got a 2v2 matchup on Rails and Metal. There's going to be very, very good players here. In fact, well, let's go introduce the Wehrmacht first. Why not? The Wehrmacht, we have two players. Rom Jim as one of them, and also his teammate, Go AI Rainbow 6007 So if you go take a look at the leaderboards and see the 2v2 arranged teams, you'll notice that they are actually at the top of the list. Wow! So there you go, that is the number one arranged team for 2v2 at the moment for the Wehrmacht. And over for the Allies, we've got Zero Flames playing as the Brits with Thanks Kill Me playing as the Americans. Okay, so they're actually level 17 at the moment in terms of arranged teams. I was actually looking for Zero Flames like 1v1 matches and this is how I eventually got to this 2v2 match. He's actually a level 16 um, Brit player at the moment in 1v1, so I was kind of interested to see like what the Brit players are up to at the moment with their strategies. Are they blobbing? Are they not blobbing? Well, we'll have to see, okay? So we're at the 5 second mark and we're going to be starting in 3 seconds. So in 3, 2, 1, and let's begin. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, here we go. Off to another very exciting episode in the Company of Heroes Battlefield. Now, have you guys actually noticed uh, that we message when you were in Company of Heroes today? Um, I actually opened up a Company of Heroes today and I noticed that there's that flashing highlighting bar, the news bar, and I was like, hmm, new messages, new news. That's kind of unusual. We haven't had new news in months now. So, if you guys uh, haven't noticed, what basically was posted up was a message by THQ Links, basically saying that he was the new community manager and there's new things in store. What the hell is up with that? There's new things in store for Company of Heroes. Basically saying some uh, good stuff is going to be coming for the Company of Heroes community. That's a lot of exciting stuff to look forward to. I'm not exactly sure if he means in terms of Company of Heroes 2 or if he means in terms of events. No idea, but I'm sure they'll be, uh, they'll be working something out. Most likely, it seems like they were talking about events, but then again, we all know Company of Heroes 2 is going to be coming out relatively soon, so it could also be that, right? Okay, so taking a look at what's going on in the field at the moment, we've got the Brits who are... Pushing on towards the munitions in the center side, you can notice that that is a plus 10 munitions over here. If we look at the tactical map, we can also see the Wehrmacht making a forward push on the right hand side, one of them anyway, and the other one doing a left turn push on the left hand side. So I actually like going into the tactical map occasionally just to see what's actually going on. Uh, it gives you an overall perspective of what's actually uh, on, on the field. We can see, for example, a motorbike from the... <laughs> Uh, Vermont is kind of owning a engineer over here. I bet we could actually watch this entire game just on the tactical map. Do you guys mind? Nah, I'm just joking. We're not going to do that in the entire game. Can you imagine how boring that would be? Hmm. Uh, so here we go. We've got the motorcycle just chasing away that engineer, killing two of the men. But they managed to cap that uh, sort of vital uh, fuel point. I suppose you could say it's sort of vital. I mean, it's not really the highest out of all the fuel points on the map, but then again, it's the sort of uh, fuel point that's always contested, it's in no man's land, it's smack dab in the middle, everyone always wants it, there's all this cover around it, and it's sort of these, uh, a leeway point, whoever can uh, push uh, the other opponent slightly back, then they can always grab that fuel point, so think of it sort of like a, a reward, a bonus point for actually being a little bit successful in uh, pushing your opponent, anyway. Okay, so right hand side in the hands of the Wehrmacht, the um, Brits are quite happy just parking down their uh, gypsy caravan in the center with the uh, casualty cleaning center just coming down. So let's actually head on over to Zero Flames and look at specifically what he's got. He's just got that uh, two uh, infantry sections 
Uh, one obviously right from the start, that recon squad, and also a lieutenant. And he's going for a casualty clearing center pretty much straight away. Interesting sort of stuff. Um, just going to be supplementing his army, getting those guys, picking up the wounded um, as soon as he can. It's going to be sort of vital, especially in situations like this where you had the MG try to kill these guys before they could get down the casualty clearing center. Uh, but fortunately, they're going to be pushed back a little bit because there was a flying key rifleman squad coming in from the side. You know, that wouldn't have been a great, uh, great start to have uh, <laughs> your MG getting flanked so early on. So what do we got for the Vermok? Let's head on over to them and see specifically what's going on with them. Go AI Rainbow Six, this gentleman here, we, as you guys can see with his highlighted units, he's got all of that at the moment. Two uh, Pioneers, two MGs, a Volks, and also a motorbike. Notice how the motorbikes were the first units coming out for both players. Notice that, notice that, don't take that into... Um, for granted, the reason they're doing that is to get on that early harassment of the engineers, okay? There's a reason that people get motorbikes as their first unit, okay? You should know this by now. But if you don't, the reason is so that they can harass engineers and anything that's capping points early on. That's what we saw with that motorbike killing off those engineers and such like that. And it worked, it worked. They pushed it back, although they didn't actually finish off the entire squad. They pushed it back, okay? Oh no, oh no, this MG is taking a huge amount of uh, damage here. Just actually being finished off entirely. The gentleman, uh, in fact the Bren squad getting out of there. But the Bren carrier is going to have the same sort of fate. I think it's probably going to be going down considering how things are chasing it. But they're not even focus firing it. What's going on with you guys? Do not let it go. Oh, thank gosh. Out of control <laughs> ramming right into the midst of those Volks Grenadiers. Kind of surprising that a, a, a vehicle can crash into a bunch of gentlemen. It's almost like Superman isn't, in a way, isn't it? Like, imagine if a vehicle crashed into Superman. You could imagine that sort of cartoonish effect of the vehicle going around Superman and, you know, just being crumpled whilst Superman is unafflicted. It's sort of like that, the Brendan Carey crashing into the gentleman. And they're not afflicted, they're probably thinking, what the hell just happened? Um... Here we go, we've got all these guys going down. Look at that massive flame damage by the pioneers. All those guys grouped up together. I think that was like five, five burning bodies in this mass sort of grave right here. Wow, c carnage, carnage already going on the go. Uh, whew. it looks like the right hand side is kind of uncontested at the moment. The Wehrmacht has sort of lost a hold of it, trying to uh, push on the center side. The Brits with their HQ right here, so very, very close. You know, this is one of the best combinations to have. Sorry, I've just got a bit of hiccups or uh, gas in my stomach. Oh god, that sounds horrible. Um, this is one that. What the heck is going on over here? Oh, we've got a capping engineer squad. This is one of the great combinations with uh, two versus two auto match. I think when you have an allied team, it's always a great, great idea to have one American, one Brit. Reason being is because you can have this nice HQ right on the cent, right in the center near the front line. Brits can retreat to it, uh, reinforce from there. But also a nice nifty thing is that the Americans can also reinforce from there. So you know if they have the option to not fully retreat, but they can fall back a little bit, they can get themselves. Um, healed up. Now one question that actually comes to my mind is say if the Brits with their casualty clearing center I don't know if this is actually true. I think it would be but anyway um, Say if the Brits with their casualty clearing center say if they uh, Activated their healing ability and so they were healing up their own guys Could the Americans with their riflemen and all their infantry could they get healed at the same time? I believe they could be could be I don't understand why it wouldn't work because of the, you know it works for the Panzer Elite for example So I think it would um yeah, work and also with the triage center works that way as well. So yeah, I imagine so as well. So there you go, two nifty things. You have that uh, reinforcement point from the headquarters. You've also got that casualty clearing center to reinforce, um, heal your guys up again. Also, I think another great combination is likewise with the Wehrmacht and also a Panzer Elite player. If you had the that combination, you could also have the uh, free re, re healing healing abilities by having the field um, defensive operations from the Panzer League. That's also always a nifty thing because you don't, you save a lot of munitions. You don't have to spend that, what, 30 munitions or so to get a heal pack otherwise with your normal Wehrmacht infantry. Okay, so it looks like the field is coming back a little bit into play here. Equality, you can see that the uh, Wehrmacht have 
recaptured what was being uh, decapped by the engineers and now we've just got a few riflemen heading up along the right hand side probably just want to get rid of these uh, pesky pesky snipers because look at that the snipers are really racking in the kills here so let's see this one nine kills 14 on the other one Bren Kiri was trying to go in for a kill right there but actually landing on the mine uh, heavily damaging its engine so it can't really go anywhere oh god no one sniper going down I don't know why he had to go down. Couldn't he have stayed camouflaged or something? You know, couldn't he have just... I think he decamouflaged him to make him run a bit faster, but uh, kind of working in the opposite effect. Losing that sniper right there. Not what he was probably intending at the moment. So whilst all these guys are retreating and these guys are just decapping, let's see what's going on. The bases we've got for Aram Jim, he's going for a T1 to T3 jump. As you guys can see, the Sturm army just coming down over here. I also noticed the pack out on the field, so go AI Rainbow Six has gone for the T2 Creek Barracks, obviously complementing each other. Uh, they're not both going for the Creek Barracks, they're not both going for Sturm Armory. Um, they're both going for different things. One's going for Storm Army, one's going for Creek Barracks, just so they can work with what's most comfortable for them. One person, for example, will Rainbow Six will have that majority of the anti-tank, as you guys can see with his Grenadiers and the Panzer Shreks and also the packs around the field, whilst Rom Jim will be probably, I imagine, going for Pumas and such like that to help with the anti-infantry force capabilities. Could work. I noticed that another good strategy. Oh my god, look at this decapping. This, uh... <laughs> Thanks, Kilmy is being really harassive here. He's not stopping at the front line. He's going all the way to just trying to decap everything he can. So let's actually take a look at uh, go at AI Rainbow Six and see his resources. Kind of interesting. I didn't really know this. Um, even though this point might be decapped, the uh, all the resources are accumulated as a team so even though that point is decapped he's still getting a load of resources from everything that's connected over here okay that's interesting sort of stuff i had that idea in my mind but it's like always one of these sort of myths you know i think maybe one day i'm gonna have to do a myth busting episode or something like that all the myths out there and just bust them for example so here you guys go if you didn't know already uh if, if you're playing a team match as long as one person is connected to all the territory then it doesn't matter uh, you can still have that resource income. So I'm not sure if Thanks Kill Me knows that. Maybe that's why he's trying to decap those points specifically. Maybe he thinks that if he decaps them, then um, Rainbow Six is going to have to suffer. Well, not really the case. Anyway, I was going to say a little bit earlier, for the Wehrmacht, a good thing to actually go for also is a double Sturm Armory. I noticed that works really, really well. Uh, if you have double Pumas coming out, if you have that early advantage and you push your opponent quite well, you can get double Pumas and just absolutely wreck them. Likewise, there's good anti-tank uh, that comes out from the Sturm Armory as well in the form of Stugs and also the Geschutzwagen, which is okay, but you know, uh, Stug is obviously better. And so yeah, that could definitely work as well. So let's take a look at what the uh, Americans and the Brits are up to because what I see is actually a howitzer barrage coming down. So that is the 25 pounder gun a howitzer. Look at that thing flying, firing right on up into the air over here. Man, man, man. Powerful stuff, isn't it? So that's going to be good a good start to make you push on all these stationary units such as the MGs and the packs and such like that. Going to be really, really vital. And also liking the placement of it being behind all of the lines over here. So it's quite, it's near the front line, but at the same time, it's very well protected because uh, behind all the men over here. So it's going to be kind of difficult for the Wehrmacht to even get in there and take it out unless they come in from the side or something like that. But I think they're going to be a little bit cautious here. They're kind of focusing directly here with the bold assaults, not really flanking at the moment. So what the Brits have got, they have a blob out, and this is exactly what I don't like blobs. Uh, as I mentioned in one of my previous casts, if you have the option to blob, don't do it. If you have the necessity to blob, like you have to blob, then okay, fair enough, but otherwise I really, really hate blobbing so much because I think it can be really abusive when you have multiple lieutenants, two lieutenants, three lieutenants, it really, really becomes quite difficult to take on then. Um, and the veterans here is instant. That's the thing about the Brits with their um, lieutenants and such. They get the veterancy as soon as the squads are out. It's not like, for example, the Americans or the Panzer Elite that have to earn it. 
and so they have to take a while to uh, fight and gain it, the birds get it instantly. They they buy it in the form of their lieutenants, and there you go. Wherever their lieutenants are, that's where the veterans is. Um, so when you have two or three of those around, it really is difficult to take on. Uh, here we go, Houser Shoot being very, very correct with its shots here. Coming down right on top of the pack and the MG, killing a few guys. Whether it's going to actually finish off any of them. Uh, no, it doesn't really look like it's, anything's going to be happening here. So, let's see what's going to happen with this uh, Puma. We'll just follow him from his perspective. And he's just trying to be a little bit cautious at the moment. Pack running away here because he knows it's not, not a good place to be in with all these impending uh, squads over here. Also, this flanking M8. Uh, but still, he's turned around to try and take out this M8. Oh, 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 I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It looks like these squads are maybe going to try to close in and maybe take out this pack. Could it be? Could it be? I'm not sure. Uh, Alright, so let's head on over to Thanks Kill Me, the American, since we haven't really paid much attention to him. This is what he has at the moment. Loads and loads of riflemen accompanied with that MA Army car. So just taking a guess of what he has at the moment with his buildings, he's most likely got... Um... The motorpole, obviously, if he has the MA armored car. So, heading on over to his base, as you guys can see, he's got the motorpole, he's also got the triage center, gonna be providing some um, healing abilities for all these rifleman squads. He definitely needs it with all of those squads. Uh, yeah, definitely, why not? I suppose this is always a good thing. You know, when you have the triage center, they're always gonna be getting themselves healed up for free and instantly like that, but I'm just sort of wondering, like, maybe if you want to save the uh, healing capability, like, there you go, for example. They're getting healed up as soon as they're nearby this uh, casualty clearing center. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. So the ability was activated and they were getting healed up, so maybe, I don't know, if you're really trying to be one of these budget-conscious American players and you had a Brit ally, you could always just use their casualty clearing center. To, uh, to heal up nearby, um, but it's really up to you. Then again, it's not always guaranteed that you're going to get that ability to heal up if your Brit doesn't need it, so maybe the triage center is needed. It's really up to you. Um, depends if you want to be cost effective or not. Okay, but the sniper's doing a decent job here. Seven kills on this one, 25 on the other. Oh my gosh, these kills have been really, really racking up. Definitely a great way to take on blobs and loads of infantry is snipers, snipers, snipers. I'd actually maybe like to see a third sniper come out because that is, uh, considering the amount of men now, I think two snipers is, it has a lot, a very, very big uh, workload at the moment. I think three snipers would uh, be definitely a great effective thing to have at the moment. But still, they're picking off their targets one by one, just dwindling them down. Also, the Pumas providing some support here, but notice how they're backing off. They cannot take them on directly. It's not in their capability to do so. Heavily damaged, need to uh, get repaired here. So, whilst all this battling is going on, let's take a look at the doctrinal abilities. You can notice that the Allied War Machine is out for the Americans, so they've gone for their armor company. It's also um, the Allied War Machine, so that is, I believe, going towards the... Oh god, please, please say it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I saying this right? I hope it's. To I think it's towards the Calliope because otherwise, if you have the field repairs and then then you go on to a Pershing, I believe so. Anyway, so the Allied War Machine is on towards the Calliope. Uh, interesting stuff. That he's going to be going for the Calliope first. Maybe they just want more artillery support to just dwindle down everything that the Wehrmacht has because there's a lot of infantry and having more artillery. Well, more artillery never hurts, does it? You can never complain about more artillery. Uh, let's take a look at Zero Flames over here. You can see that Zero Command Points has been um, contributed to the Brits. So that means they've obviously spent their resources, or their CP, sorry. And the only thing that I could really guess on is that it could only be the Royal Artillery support. Um, reason being is that the Royal Artillery support has a lot of passive buffs. I mean, for example, the only thing that you would maybe see here is probably just the priest. Once you act unlock the priest, that's probably the only thing that you'll see in the um, abilities bar. So, I imagine that it is the Royal Artillery support. Gonna be good because then they can get forward observation. Um, 
barrages from their officer, from their lieuten uh, lieutenants, for example. And they got a lot of other pa passive buffs. Now, actually, one really interesting point, I'm not sure if you guys uh, know this or not, I did a little bit of research, and one really interesting point with the Royal Artillery support is with the 25 pounder gun howitzer. So, I'm not sure if you guys ever thought about this question. Would you rather get a howitzer or a priest? What is the difference between the two? Obviously, we you can notice from the physical traits of both um, of both units that the 25 pound gun, pounder gun howitzer is a mobile, but the priest is mobile. So maybe that's what you guys are initially thinking is, oh yeah, so the priest must be better if it's more mobile. Um, to some respect, obviously, if it's mobile, then it can avoid artillery barrages, avoid being attacked in general. But there's also some other nifty things that I think the 25-pounder gun howitzer is actually better than the uh, normal priest. Reason being is, if you get the uh, Royal Artillery Support Doctrine, you actually have a few of those passive buffs. You know, for example, when you get super artillery, supercharged artillery rounds, that basically allows you to shoot about 50 to 60 percent farther, so much, much farther in the map. That also changes the ability on the howitzer, not the priest. It also changes the ability on the howitzer so that the cooldown changes from 105 seconds to 90 seconds. So it's 15 seconds quicker. That doesn't happen on the priest. Um, you also have two other passive buffs. For example, with the Creeping Barrage and also the, I believe, the, uh, what is it, the Counter Barrage? No, sorry, it's the Overwatch ability. Those also decrease the 15, uh, the seconds by 15, by 15 seconds on the cooldown time, alright? So I know this is sort of deviating a little bit, but overall, if you have these three buffs, for the Howitzer, it's going to decrease the time from 105 seconds to 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, you can use a barrage on the Howitzer, whilst the Priest is always going to be 105 seconds, okay? So that, in my opinion, is why the 25-pounder gun Howitzer is a lot better, because it can fire almost twice as fast as the Priest. So, it's really up to you guys, but overall I would say that the 25 pounder gun howitzer is better. So, let's see what's going on in the field. We've got snipers out for the Americans now, probably because they were getting a bit frustrated with everything that Rom Jim was coming out with his snipers. So, good that he's bringing out something to counter it in the form of just direct uh, other snipers over here. And they're doing a good job as well, so let's take a look at the kills that they have. Four on this one, five on the other, so they're probably newly produced. And they're dwindling down these guys, and that's uh, definitely what they're needing at the moment. But still, the Wehrmacht are on the back foot here, because the Americans and the Brits have so many units. They have a lot of anti-infantry, as you guys saw with those Grenadiers, just having to retreat because there's way too much to deal with. Especially look at all of this. My god, that is a lot. Including the tanks here, you've got the Kromo command tank and also the Kromo here. Going to be making a fire faster. It's a lot, a lot to deal with. How are the Vermont going to respond? Not exactly sure. They've got, in my opinion, an army that's not really capable of taking on everything that the Americans, that the Allies have at the moment. They've got a few Pumas, a stray pack here and there, but still not really the absolute hard counters they need to take on everything here. They need more numbers. They maybe need to start thinking about heavy vehicles if they have the uh, fuel, that is. So let's actually maybe check with Rom Jim, for example, and see how much fuel. That is where they're suffering at the moment. Only 33 fuel, and they can't really afford these heavy vehicles. So they're just working with these lighter, uh, lower costly ones, like the Puma, for example. That's what they're working with here. And they're also trying to get Veterancy out on it. Veterancy 2 out for the light vehicles, their Pumas. Okay, so they're trying to take on these guys, but still, you've got the... Uh, captain and also the lieutenants over here. <laughs> That's actually a funny point. Somebody told me that they were getting a little bit annoyed with me calling them lieutenants. I should be calling them lieutenants because in Britain, obviously, they call them lieutenants. I don't, I don't exactly know why. The spelling's a little bit off to me. If you ask me, that L I E U could somehow be left, but fair enough. So the lieutenants and all the Brits are retreating. You can see the Clypey barrage coming down right on top of everything over here. Specifically on top of the medic bunker. And, you know, I'm not really sure why the uh, the captain was there. The captain only works in your own territory. 
um, not in enemy territory, so kind of a silly choice. Maybe it's for yeah. some sort of barrages, but then again, you have your lieutenant lieutenants there, so I'm not exactly sure why. Um, but yeah, so far what we've got for the Americans, they just brought out that Calliope, so that's going to be working with the Howitzer here to to uh, leave a dent in the Wehrmacht. And definitely it's not what the Wehrmacht need at the moment with that Calliope out on the field. I mean, each of those rockets can devastate uh, infantry and just the amount of rockets that comes out, well, it's going to be difficult to uh, handle. What we can see with Ram Jim, however, is that he's got the Terror Doctrine. Notice how specifically he's gone along the uh, left-hand side, I believe, with the Inspired Assault going along the fire, uh, Firestorm and over to the V1. Interesting sort of stuff. So if you guys have been watching all those episodes with, you know, a V1 to remember, a V1 uh, Strikes Again, the sequel, you know how those things end with the Brits. Um, hang on in here, guys. That is the V1. It's obviously, if somebody selects that and there's a lot of infantry on the field, you can imagine what their intentions are going to be, okay? So it looks like the Wehrmacht are trying to respond somehow with their own artillery. We noticed that the naval Werfers were out in the fields here. You could hear their uh, screeching sounds uh, as they fired. I'm not exactly sure how effective this is going to be though. I mean, the naval Werfers, in my opinion, don't really compare to the Calliope and the Howitzer. They're good, they're good, don't get me wrong, but they're not the absolute end at all. They're a bit slow to go from up in the air and then down again. They're a bit slow and they don't um, have a massive blast radius, so uh, we'll have to see how effective they're going to be. We had the Allied War Machine just activated there on top of the M10 just as it was going out of control. And so that's going to be a free M10 for the Americans, so, you know, losing it, but also getting it back. Oh, here we go, Firestorm! And all these guys using Heroic Charge to get out of there. That was the intention of the uh, of Wehrmacht right there. Throw down a Firestorm on top of all these guys and hopefully kill them, but luckily, lucky for them, two lieutenants nearby, that was... Um, probably one of them could use Heroic Charge right there. And there you go. Uh, getting out of the way of that Firestorm. They still have loads of munitions. Ram Jim over here to cool down another one. Or a V1 rocket. So it really depends what's, go what's going to happen here. But they're trying to cap this. But not looking like it's going to happen. Because there's an MG over here. All these men just falling back. And the Howitzer Barrage coming down over here. Oh gosh, this looks a bit saturated. This is actually a creeping barrage, if anything. Yeah, that's that was a creeping barrage, my friends. Uh, notice how that's going down the way. Not really killing anything, but it's moving down the way. Are they doing another one? Are they actually doing another one? I don't know, I saw the smoke coming down again, so I was thinking maybe it might be another one, but maybe that was just part of the creeping barrage, I guess so. Um, really effective thing, that uh, the creeping barrage, because it just saturates a line, an area of uh, terrain with with barrages. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. If you notice that your opponent has a lot of defenses in that area, a lot of vital sort of stuff, throw down a creep and barrage, you'll weaken it very, very quickly. Even if they try to fall back, boom, there's gonna be that succession, that line of uh, barrages. Really, really effective ability. I absolutely love it when I'm playing the Brits. But anyway, um, all these guys move on forward. Absolutely hate the Brit blobs. God, I hate them with a passion. All these men just grouped up together. It's absolutely impossible to take on. Actually, one of the best counters to a Brit blob is actually if you have uh, assault grenades. Notice how these guys are throwing just normal grenades. It's not the same as assault grenades. The Grenadier grenades, not that effective to take on all these gentlemen. All of them having to retreat. One squad going down. Oh my gosh, Panther just over here, very, 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 very close, lucky these guys that they weren't killed. Uh, one of the most effective ways, as I was saying, to take out on a Brit Blob is with the Soul Grenade. So if you go for the Blitzkrieg Doctrine, I always think it's a great idea if one of you guys, if one of the Wehrmacht go for the Blitzkrieg Doctrine. If you get that Assault Grenades, it instant suppresses units. Simple as that, instant suppresses units, and... Um, that's definitely what you need for uh, all these blobs. 
you can take them on really effectively. Inst instant suppression also does a lot of damage to them as well. Actually, now that I think about it, I was just sort of lost in my thoughts there. I was sort of thinking about it. I think the reason why this captain was nearby all the infantry was because... Well, look at it. He's veteran C3. He, I think he just wanted to gain veteran C. I mean, if you guys don't know, the uh, captain, when he gets to veteran C3, he unlocks uh, a few special abilities, such as, I believe, one extra command point or something like that. You also get... Uh, some sort of resource income. I don't remember the exact specifics, but you unlock some kind of nifty things, actually, if your um, captain gets to Vatency 3. So you guys can check it out on Company of Heroes Wiki if you want to know the exact specifics of what you get, but um, I think that's maybe the reason why they went for it. So a really smart player, this is uh, Zero Flames, for doing that. He definitely knows what he needs to do. Knights Cross Holders over here. Oh, God. Being absolutely shredded apart, even though they were Vatency uh, 3, they're absolutely torn apart by these multiple Venancy um, squads over here. And it's going to be really, really difficult for the Vermont to even take out these lieutenants. Why? Because they're Venancy um, 3. They have a lot more health than a normal uh, Zero Venancy squad. Uh oh! Firestorm coming down on everything over here. And also V1! 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 And look at what's going on. You can see the headquarters being packed up and everything retreating. Because why? You can hear the V1 coming down. Extra precaution. All those resources just gone away. Oh my gosh, it didn't kill anything! You can see how saturated this area is in flames and and just smoldering black as ash. Oh my gosh, all that resources did nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Everything retreated for the Brits because they wanted to be uh, uh, on the safe side, not lose their entire stuff because that could have been a potential comeback. But, oh my gosh, six uh, VPs left for the Wehrmacht and counting down with the Allies still at 500. That is a massive, massive difference. Complete opposite end of the spectrums over here. And oh my gosh. That could have been really effective if that V1 landed properly, but uh, not at all. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe they didn't have the correct site, but they sort of put it a bit short. Don't you guys think they put it like around here? It should have been right on top of the HQ, in my opinion, but I guess they were a little bit short with uh, what was going on here. All these uh, tanks moving in. You had the Allied War Machine as well, and now it's just, I think, going to be too much for the... Uh, at Vermont to actually handle here because look at all these vehicles. You also got the impending doom of the uh, blobs up here that are just getting reinforced. Oh my god, the Allied War Machine providing some uh, free M10s. And the Panther is pretty much kind of stuffed, isn't it? To take on all of the stuff over here. Oh boy. Oh boy. And so. The final moments of this game. The Axe is still trying to hold in here. Even though an arm armada, the Armageddon, is upon them. Absolutely love what they're doing over here. Look at all these guys just retreating back to their captain. Good stuff, isn't it? I mean, Zero Flames definitely knows how to work with the Brits. Bring that captain up near the infantry to... Uh, to get it... A bit, a bit of veterancy on it. Also retreating the men back to the American space, packing up their command truck. You know, that's that's really great stuff. I mean, he definitely knows the exact details, the small details of everything about the Bird faction. That's why he's level 16 at the moment in 1v1. And so we go over here, six points and dwindling down. Are they gonna capture the, these VPs or are they just gonna go for annihilation? Well, I don't know, looks like they're just going to be going for a direct base assault over here. Just trying to uh, destroy the buildings inside the Vermont base while they cannot really do anything. And there we go, that is, in fact, not even a VP win or annihilation, they just completely dropped. The Axis had nothing to take this all on. Um, it's just way, way, way too much. I think they probably saw with their pioneers just this um, impending uh, doom here with the... Uh, Brits and it was just way too much. They knew it was way too much. But okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Now where did the Vermont go wrong? Well, I'm not exactly too sure to be honest with you guys. 
Uh, they didn't really go wrong anywhere. Maybe I could say that they needed more snipers, but then again, their snipers were doing a really, really good job. It's difficult to say. I think you could tweak the strategy of theirs a little bit. Maybe they should have gotten uh, more Pumas out. Both of them should have gotten more Pumas. Uh, maybe both of them should have gone for Storm, storm Armors and gotten Pumas, and then they could have effectively taken on these... Uh, the Brit Blobs better. Maybe one of them should have gone for Blitzkrieg Doctrine and got Assault Grenades. It could have all helped. Slight tweaks to the strategy uh, could have completely changed this thing around. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And of course, well, I don't think I have anything else to say. I hope you all have a very nice day. Until next time, see you all later. Bye bye.